The OECD forecasts that by 2030, ocean-based industries will employ more than 40 million people worldwide. Today 80% of global trade is carried by sea. This illustrates the importance of gathering all the available data on the marine and coastal environments. Marinomica provides on-demand derived data services, in particular forecasts, to a wide range of users managing and mitigating challenges and exploiting opportunities arising from the sea. The platform is a one-stop shop offering its services to all parties engaged in sea-based activities. The innovative platform is an excellent tool for mitigating pollution hazards, untreated waste, and more. Marinomica addresses the needs of offshore maritime, renewable energy, fisheries and aquaculture, tourism, oil and gas exploration, shipping, and ports. The platform provides data including historical and real-time data and forecasting that provide critical seawater quality parameters, based on Earth observation monitoring data systems, like satellites and in-situ sensors and data. Marinomica is ideal for identifying coastal erosion, hotspots in specific areas along the shoreline and obtain forecasts about potential coastal retreat and loss of land. The all-in-one system provides you with a complete picture of current and future parameters in its full situational context to fine-tune operational and business planning increasing revenue and reducing costs. For more information visit www.marinomica.com. Hello and welcome to uh, this uh, webinar in the next GEOS webinar series. Uh, I hope you all have had a wonderful summer. Some of you might have been in the ocean and the ocean is the topic of today. My name is Bentele Liabi. I'm going to be your host today. And as usual, I have a, a panel of experts that will teach us and introduce us to some interesting topics. Now, um, may I ask my panel to uh, reveal their um, existence here? Um, can we get, yeah, here's uh, Simon, Georgios, Loring, and Arne Jürgen. You will get to know them more shortly. Um, the program today is um, four presentations and a Q&A at the end. We will get an overview of the Odyssea project a Horizon 2020 project. Then we will get to know the Marinomica platform. For those of you who, who entered the room a little bit early, you will have seen a very short video. You will see it again if you missed it. Don't worry, you will see it again. A very short introduction to the Marinomica platform. Then we will see some Odyssea uh, services and products. And finally, we'll link all of this, the Odyssea Mar Marinomica with next years and even beyond that on the horizon on on uh, the european and the global scene so that's the program for today uh, we would love to hear from you and to demonstrate how you can start that we will do as usual here a weather report so we would like to hear what the weather is like if you still have summer or not uh, depending on where you are in the world. And we will uh, let the panel uh, let us know what the weather is like, where they are and where they are. So we start with you, Georgios. Where are you and what's the weather like? Hello, I'm Georgios Sileos. Uh, thank you, Ben, for organizing this event. Uh, I'm based in Kavala in northern Greece. The weather is fantastic here, as always in Greece. <laughs> so thank you very much. That's the impression we have. Thank you, Georgios. <laughs> Uh, Simon, um, how's the weather where you are? Hi, I'm Simon Keeble. Um, I'm based on the island of Anglesey uh, in North Wales. So it is uh, grey and threatening to rain, which is perfectly normal for us. Uh, I guess we've probably got about 18 degrees and you know, maybe we'll get some sunshine a bit later on. Yes. Uh... As, as suspected, it might be raining on the on the islands where down down south, as we say in Norway. Now, Lorink, where are you, and what's the weather like? Hi, I'm uh, Lorenz Meisarus. I'm calling from the Netherlands, and I expect that the weather will change probably ten times during the webinar. At the moment, <laughs> it's sunny, but uh, I cannot guarantee that it will last. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Arne Jürgen, How about you? Yes, I'm uh, calling in from Oslo, Norway. We have a visit of summer again, 25 degrees Celsius, uh, blue skies and sunshine. 
and that for a few days and we'll have a few day more before the cold weather comes back <laughs> yes exactly so uh i'm also i'm a little bit northwest of oslo but we have this amazing summer um, that really makes it difficult to think about the soon to come winter storms. So uh, yeah, we are enjoying summer 20 something degrees and uh, almost like Greece actually, <laughs> believe it or not. Anyway, thank you for uh, letting us know what the weather is like and where you are. We, it's, uh, we are a whole bunch of people here today, so it would be interesting to, to learn that. Um, hello, uh, Manuel, Amin, Annalisa, Eric, Katerina. Lovely to see you. Um, you can write questions and comments in the chat box where you are telling us about the weather first. And uh, we will answer that in the Q&A at the end, except for the questions you might have to Simon about Marionomica because he has to leave after his presentation. So uh, if you have questions to him, make sure you ask them so he can address them before he leaves. Um, and that uh, this will, of course, be recorded. And since you are registered, you will get this in your inbox. So don't worry about that. And there will be some uh, uh, polls during the presentations. They will be super short, uh, but might be useful and interesting for you also to learn about each other as a group. So keep an eye on uh, the chat and what's going on besides the presentations. Now. I think we are ready to start the program and the presenters will introduce themselves uh, before they talk. Very short introduction. Otherwise, I will share if you want, if you're curious to know more about them, you, I will provide some links in the chat so you can study that in peace and quiet. But we will let the speakers introduce themselves before they start to present. Now, uh, Georgios, are you ready? Hi. Yes, hello. I'm Georgos Sileos. I'm a professor of oceanography in Democritus University of Thrace in uh, northern Greece, a university which is based in northern Greece, very close to the borders with Bulgaria and Turkey. I'm, uh, I teach in several undergraduate and postgraduate courses. Over the years, I have participated in uh, around 40 uh, research projects funded by EU and the um, national funds. Okay, let us hear what uh, Odyssea is. And we will turn, the other, rest of us will turn off our cameras and but return when Georgios has presented. The floor is shall yours. I, shall I start my presentation? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. I hope you can see my presentation. Yes, perfect. Okay. So, hello. Um, as I said, I will give you an overview of the Odyssey project. I would like to thank NextGeos and the Geos community for allowing us to uh, give this presentation and uh, show the activities, the achievements, and the challenges ahead of us uh, within this uh, the framework of Odyssey project. Odyssey is funded by Horizon 2020. Um, so. What is Odyssea? Odyssea is a user-centered project, an initiative which aims to make the Mediterranean marine data easily accessible to a multitude of uh, a broad uh, spectrum of end users and stakeholders. And we try to do this by harmonizing the existing Earth observing systems, the data uh, of existing Earth observing systems. For example, by, we, by uh, providing this data through a, a unique platform, the Marinomica platform, that we will speak more on this later, by upgrading the existing operational oceanographic capacities, supporting the EU policy implementation, improving the interoperability in monitoring. We develop our own sensors and uh, pro uh, systems to monitor. And we try to foster blue growth jobs creation and open the participation to non-EU member states. So, in fact, in Odyssea, we have uh, partners from non-EU members of the Mediterranean Sea. For example, we have uh, partners from Morocco, from Algeria, from Tunisia, from Egypt, Israel and Turkey. So, uh, the main pillars of the project are these. Uh, the main output of this project is a unique platform, a novel and easy to use system, which integrates, aggregates and 
represents data from existing systems. We also develop our own sensors, our own systems to monitor the sea, and we uh, develop systems that are easy to plug and play with different sensors, especially for the measurement of emerging pollutants like microplastics. We develop a series of numerical models which are coupled and they are linked and they run operationally and they downscale the existing models and the data that are provided by databases like Copernicus. Uh, and we are testing the usability of uh, existing tools and interfaces like uh, AquaSafe and Delft Hughes in order to uh, provide a task manager for all these models. We develop well-defined products and services to the end users and we are testing the capacity of modern algorithms and tools like big data analysis um, using uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning uh, in order to link the various data and to give the services to the users. So this is the main uh, overview, the slide that gives you a brief idea what Odyssea is about. As you can see on the top of this uh, uh, figure, you can see the different data providers, the satellites, the existing databases, the sensors, the models, and all these are fed to the Odyssea, the Marinomica platform. But on, all, on, on top of that, we have the data from the Odyssea observatories, where we have a series of uh, intense monitoring and modeling activities. And as you can see at the end of the day, these data are post-processed, assimilated with the sensors, and the, finally the end users receive this data according to their demand. So this is a brief overview of the Marinomica platform, the platform we developed in Odyssea project. As you can see, it's very simple to use. You select the data set and the provider of this, uh, of this data, and then you can very simply and easily make these very nice maps. And uh, also you can create time series by picking a specific point or uh, have some statistics out of the diagrams and the selected data sets. Um, we focus our activities in nine areas, nine pilot areas. These are called observatories. And we try and we are doing this in order to fill in the data gaps, especially along the North African and Middle East coastline. So in parallel, we increase the spatial and temporal resolution of existing data sets, like those provided by Copernicus, as I said earlier. You see here the pilot areas in North Aegean, the Thracian Sea, uh, the Gulf of Kosovo, the Valencia coastline, Northern Adriatic, the Arjubain Stora Gulf in Algeria, the Gabez Gulf in uh, Tunisia, the Al Hoxheima National Park of uh, uh, Mar Marine uh, Protected Area in Morocco, the coastline of Israel, and the whole coastline of Egypt, where is the influence of the Nile. Uh, what is now an observatory? For us, an observatory is an area where we have a local partner, a local Odyssea partner who is responsible to run uh, Odyssea activities, but also to uh, provide trained staff in order to run the numerical models, to have the trained staff to use and maintain the sensors we deploy, but also to identify and contact uh, the potential end users, uh, the stakeholders that need marine data, to promote the use of the platform and to customize the dashboard uh, of the Marinomica platform, a tool that gives the users the capacity to have uh, personalized information on marine and maritime data. These are the models. As you can see, an overview of the various models. We are applying a series of uh, uh, numerical models for the whole uh, nine areas. As you can see, we run hydrodynamic models, wave models, biogeochemical, uh, also oil spill models on this uh, right hand side. And here, these are ecotrophic models that we run for the to understand the web, uh, uh, the web, the trophic web in its area. In terms of monitoring, we have uh, two types of systems, the mobile and the fixed ones. In terms of the mobile systems, we are working mostly with gliders. The gliders we developed, these are the two systems, two Sea Explorer gliders developed by uh, Alseamar. We use three different sensor payloads. The first one, which is a standardized payload with CTD data. The second one, which is uh, for the monitoring of marine mammals, the passive acoustic monitoring. And the third one, where we have the microplastic sensor. The microplastic sensor was miniaturized and was 
designed and encompassed on top of this uh, glider so that we have the capacity really to measure microplastics as the glider moves uh, forward within the water column. Um, the, our work shows that and our tests give us very good results, but after a certain depth, the sensor has a uh, malfunctioning due to the increased pressure. And this is something that uh, we are considering and we are trying to redesign the sensor. In terms of fixed systems, we have these uh, surface buoys that are moored and they are um, uh, deployed in very close to the facilities of the various Mediterranean users. And we have these deep systems, which are uh, the benthic systems that we develop and they are uh, deployed in very deep waters. Uh, here you see a deployment very close to an oil rig at a depth of 60 meters, but we can go even deeper up to a thousand meters. And this is the microplastic sensor and the microplastic pack, pack as it has uh, included in the system. So in terms of analysis and of earth observation data, uh, we started by uh, analyzing the data gaps that exist in the Mediterranean Sea. So we have uh, reviewed the various platforms and the existing systems and the data providers. And if you wish to have more information on this, you can check this publication in Science of the Total Environment. Uh, in terms of um, uh, customized models, uh, we collaborated with the Valencia Port Authorities for the um, uh, modeling of uh, uh, the uh, the jellyfish in specific areas, specifically here, if this is the area of the Valencia coastline. This is the work done by Deltares Group. And if you wish to have more information on this, this is the work they have published in ecological modeling. In terms of uh, understanding the um, and valuing and assessing the uh, trophic web and the fishery indicators in specific areas, we have worked extensively by using the ECOPATH uh, model, which is a model, um, the most appropriate model for this type of work. And as you can see, we have developed a series of indicators for cuts, for trophic web, for the balance in fisheries, the ecological indicators and the overall assessment and uh, more, more information can be uh, extracted from this paper. Uh, we apply AI and machine learning tools for the species distribution models. We started by working with the fish, fish data from fish base, the FAO fish base. Uh, as you can see, it's a very coarse database with a lot of gaps. And after the uh, in implementation of machine learning, by considering all the data from Copernicus, we are trying, and Imodnet, we tried really and we achieved to increase the resolution down to the level of Copernicus grid cells and to also uh, uh, have in this diagram, you can see we don't have any data gaps. So we erased, we don't have any data gaps in the uh, species distribution models. Uh, more you can see this in this paper and uh, we do more or less the same work for the benthic species. As you see here, we have the seagrass habitat preferences, but again, by applying machine learning tools and the impact of climate change. Uh, so we have a, a, species a species distribution maps of the different uh, seagrass species over the Mediterranean Sea. This map was provided by FAO. And uh, we again utilize the wealth of data from Copernicus and Imodnet in order to uh, see the preferences and the impact of climate change on the distribution of species. Uh, we use the glider data to reveal the water column dynamics in specific areas as uh, uh, we have, uh, for the moment, we have deployed uh, the glider uh, in, with, in three missions in the Thracian Sea in North Aegean. We have uh, implemented two missions in the Alboran Sea in the Morocco Observatory. Now we are carrying out a mission in Tunisia, from Tunisia to Malta, in association with the University of Malta. And we uh, intend to finish the project by with two more missions, one in Israel and another one in Tunisia again. And uh, we don't only do that, but we are trying to calibrate the Copernicus data, the data from Sentinel-3, with the data that are uh, re recorded by the gliders, the chlorophyll data uh, over the euphotic layer. In terms of uh, coastal erosion, we uh, use the Sentinel and uh, Landsat uh, satellite images in order to assess the hotspots of coastal erosion. And as you can see, we have done this 
in the whole of the nine observatories of Odyssea, and there are areas where we have significant uh, issues in relation to the uh, evolution and the change of the coastline over the years. Another work that we have done is the wind resource assessments. There is a growing interest of uh, many companies to uh, invest in the wind turbines and wind farms over the Mediterranean Sea. So we have developed a methodology on how to assess the wind resources using the scatterometer data from uh, Copernicus, again, with a resolution of 0 0.25 degrees. And uh, all this data uh, and all these uh, met methods can be found in these two works. We also employ machine learning tools in order to forecast and predict in the short term and long term the uh, wind resources in specific areas. We organize workshops with uh, our users in association with uh, several uh, initiatives and projects over the Mediterranean Sea. We uh, organize every year a summer school uh, for the students and young scientists to learn about Earth observing data and uh, to use the Marinomica platform. And we train students and young scientists on the use of the Marinomica platform, especially focusing our efforts in the Northern Africa countries and the Middle East. For example, here you see the various training activities in Algeria, in Morocco, and in Tunisia. Uh, thank you very much. This was a brief overview of the project. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Georgios. That was a very, very interesting indeed and very impressive. Um, now, for uh, you who have questions, please ask questions uh, in the chat now. We will regard, we will uh, capture them and answer those um, uh, in the Q and A at the end. But before. Um, giving you some time to think about the questions, I would like to reveal the results of uh, our small little uh, informal uh, poll that we did here. I was asking you, do you need a digital marine data? And uh, yes, 80, it's a very interesting distribution. 18% of you asked yes for my science, so there are scientists here. And, but most of you are actually involved in uh, services and applications based on digital uh, marine da data. That was very interesting, 45%. Uh, we also have some policymakers here, 9%, and some students, uh, 18%. And somebody is, also, uh, is considering it, maybe, 9% uh, not yet using it. Uh, everyone is quite sure. There is 0%, I'm not sure. So that was a very interesting uh, result. Thank you so much for participating. And I'd like to share the result with you because I think this is this is interesting to, to learn about who you are in the same room with, which we cannot really know when we are not actually phys physically meeting each other. So um, ask your questions in, in the chat box and then um, preparing then for and summarizing what Giorgio, some of, some of what Giorgio was uh, telling you and uh, preparing you for the um, presentation by Simon, you will now get the video uh, about Marinomica. So let us see. Here it comes. It lasts about one and a half minute. The OECD forecasts that by 2030, ocean-based industries will employ more than 40 million people worldwide. Today 80% of global trade is carried by sea. This illustrates the importance of gathering all the available data on the marine and coastal environments. Marinomica provides on-demand derived data services, in particular forecasts, to a wide range of users managing and mitigating challenges and exploiting opportunities arising from the sea. The platform is a one-stop shop offering its services to all parties engaged in sea-based activities. The innovative platform is an excellent tool for mitigating pollution hazards, untreated waste, and more. Marinomica addresses the needs of offshore maritime, renewable energy, fisheries and aquaculture, tourism, oil and gas exploration, shipping, and ports. The platform provides data including historical and real-time data and forecasting that provide critical seawater quality parameters, based on Earth observation monitoring data systems, like satellites and in-situ sensors and data. 
Maranamaka is ideal for identifying coastal erosion, hot spots, in specific areas along the shoreline and obtain forecasts about potential coastal retreat and loss of land. The all-in-one system provides you with a complete picture of current and future parameters in its full situational context to fine-tune operational and business planning increasing revenue and reducing costs. For more information visit www.maranamica.com. Then, um, Simon, uh, let's learn a little bit about you before you introduce Marinomica. Hi, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, or depends on where you are. Um, I realize, uh, I've just realized that I'm wearing exactly the same glasses as George Oss, but I can assure you that there's a different person behind the glasses. Um, my name is Simon Keeble. I'm a, a software engineer. Um, I'm also the technical director of uh, an SME in the UK called Blue Lobster. Um, we specialize in the development of software solutions, mostly web and mobile applications uh, in and around the marine, aquatic and uh, environmental sciences, or certainly with a strong bias in that, uh, bias in that direction. Uh, and we also are quite engaged in uh, communications and marketing for a number of projects. Uh, in the Odyssea project, we uh, are the work package leaders for communication and outreach. And we've also uh, been responsible for the front end development of the uh, Marinomica website and application. Uh, but I, I hasten to add that there are a lot of people and different uh, partners involved in the development of Marinomica. So uh, we, we didn't do it in isolation. There are, there are many other people out there that have been involved in this. So hopefully that gives you a little bit about me. I'm going to try and uh, share my screen with you and give you a little bit of an overview of Marinomica itself. Um, perhaps if someone could tell me if they can see it, that would be good. We see your screen. Wonderful. Okay, um, so I'm sure you're going to hear the word Marinomica a lot. Uh, I encourage you to go to the uh, application uh, or the website and read a little bit more about it. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's an evolving project. Uh, we haven't completed it yet. Um, so the application is still in development. New data are coming online, uh, new facilities. Uh, but on the website, you should get an overview of the type of thing that we're trying to, uh, to do with the application. Uh, and this involves looking at jellyfish forecast, ocean energy, maritime safety, agriculture, fisheries, uh, plastics. Um, George just mentioned that we've got a, a plastic sensor that we've been working with. Uh, leisure and tourism and uh, coastal erosion models are coming online very, very shortly. Uh, so there's a quite a wide ranging, ranging field uh, and it's not exhaustive. There are other products that are coming online over the coming months. So this is the main screen of the application. Um, I've resisted the temptation to do a live demonstration because uh, they always go uh, interestingly. Um, and I'll just talk you through some of the uh, features of it. Um, and then hopefully you can have a look yourselves and uh, discover a bit more about it. So the left hand side of the screen, you can see that there are various parameters that you can uh, in investigate and explore. Um, a little bit lower down, uh, we have some of the products that we produce specifically as part of the Odyssey project. Um, these were forecasts, but I did take these screenshots uh, in the middle of July. Um, but the idea is that uh, you can use this to, to forecast and also to have alerts to tell you when things are coming. Uh, this is a wave power product that we produced as part of Odyssey. Um, the plots, uh, you can drill down into them a bit more. You can smooth curves out. Uh, and you can have some interactivity. You can zoom and pinch and all those sort of uh, uh, interactive features that you, you would like to have. Um, this is a, another product, which is tricks which related to eutrophication. Um, I'm not going to pretend to be the scientist here. Um, I'm a software developer that are, are working with uh, um, models that have been produced by, by the scientific teams. Uh, and in here again, you can see the interaction uh, uh, with, with the, uh, the maps, you can move around it and get the further information from it. Um, one of the key features that we have in the application is the dashboard. Um, we have uh, the ability to create lots of different dashboards to do lots of different things. Uh, we can create them as a, as a consortium and we can share them with the public and they can copy them into their own areas or other people can create, create their own dashboards. Um, each widget or part of the dashboard uh, can be shared inside this or externally. So you can embed these uh, maps and plots uh, into other applications outside of here. 
Um, and you can also uh, put in narrative. Uh, in this case at the bottom that you can see an example of narrative in there. Uh, it's just dummy text, but it's HTML. Um, so we can embed HTML and JavaScript and, and all sorts of different things in there as well so that we can put videos in there and other products and services from outside of the application uh, to complete the whole dashboard. Uh, we have time series data. Uh, these are tidal gauges where, where you can view that, uh, that data. Uh, here is uh, a tidal gauge just off of Italy. Um, uh, it's a little bit old data here. I've picked this at, at random, but it's uh, slightly old data from 2019. Uh, but you can see that uh, that's actual in, in situ uh, data. Um, another product that we produced uh, as part of Odyssey in the, uh, around Morocco uh, this is, uh, again, a sort of a, a plot that you can look at map data, um, but you can also download that data as well. So uh, we have a full download suite uh, available to us. You can fill it in manually or you can draw a box around the area that you want to download data for uh, and select the parameters uh, and features that you want to uh, get the data. It will download that to you uh, generally in the net CDF file if it's uh, spatial data such as uh, from a map. Um, but other other formats uh, are available depending on uh, um, what the, the, the data originates as. Um, we can also layer maps on top of each other. Um, so we have a hierarchy. Uh, in this case, we have um, uh, a, a visual map, but on top we have um, arrows that give uh, an indication of uh, velocity. That in this case, it's seawater. Um, and in addition to that, um, we have the ability to view the time series data that is in an area. So you can look at maps, you can look at velocity, uh, and, and you can look at the in situ data at the same time to see what's going on. So it allows you to look at many different layers together. Uh, new projects that are coming on, Ecoscope is a project that starts, um, I'm just looking at my watch, it's uh, the day after tomorrow, it starts on the 1st of September, uh, that looks at uh, uh, a, a toolbox that, uh, is uh, available using this and other tools. It's not just Marinomica, but other tools uh, to provide, uh, in, in, as it says here, to promote an efficient ecosystem-based approach to management fisheries. Um, the Marinomica platform is very much in the realms of uh, being able to provide uh, digital twins. Uh, there's a lot of buzz and talk about digital twins at the moment. Um, in the UK, where I'm from, uh, we, we, our government are very, very big on this at the moment. So it's uh, it's good that uh, Marinomica and uh, other products will be uh, combining themselves into uh, providing uh, significant digital twins. And uh, we'll announce those uh, over the next uh, few weeks and months as to what we're planning to do. Uh, and we're also in some, some good uh, conversations at the moment in uh, how to commercialize uh, or monetize the platform uh, with industry and different sectors um, so that we can see if we can uh, find a good sustainable uh, future for it that is outside of the um, I guess the standard funding model for these things. So that's that's progressing quite well as well. So very, very short introduction to it. I do ask you to go to marinomica.com. Let me know if you have any problems or if you have any questions. Uh, as I say, it's it's a beta stage at the moment, but we still have a little bit of time left to run on the uh, on the project uh, and things will change over the next few weeks and months uh, as, as we get towards the end, but also significantly ramp up in the development as uh, Ecoscope and next projects come along. So it's got a long-term future. Uh, we have a native mobile app. Uh, it says shortly on there. Um, I've actually got it. It's a, it's a national holiday today uh, in the UK, but tomorrow when I get back, and this is, this is one of the first tasks I've got to do, is to uh, do some robust testing on our native mobile app and get that into the, uh, the App Store and the Play Store uh, for, for Google. So uh, please look out for that uh, over the coming weeks and months as well. Uh, I think that'd be uh, a useful tool, uh, particularly later on when we look at um, alerts on under certain conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon. And thank you for taking the time uh, in uh, your spare time. <laughs> so, um, as I uh, warned you, you have to ask Simon uh, questions rather immediately uh, because he uh, will have to leave us. Um, but uh, while you are uh, trying to ask that, well, we have a question already for you. So keep them questions coming. So Drawer is asking, can you show jellyfish bloom predictions, Simon? 
Yeah, this is a good one and something we've been working on a lot, uh, not just from the prediction side of things, but also from citizen science. Uh, we've also been working at um, doing uh, semantic data analysis through social media to identify when people are talking about these kinds of things. Today, no, but it's very, very, sh very shortly going to arrive. And uh, it's something that we're working on. It's uh, because it's got a multi-pronged multi approach to it, not just the models, but actually uh, the, the, the research into this uh, citizen science analysis. Uh, this is uh, th th this, this could be very interesting. So yes, please look out for it. It's coming uh, today. I can't show you it today. Okay, thank you, Simon. So um, I have a question for you. Um, so do you do you catalog data on Maranomica from um, citizen scientists, for instance? Yeah, so we've got a quite a wide range of data that's that's been harvested as as a result of working through Odyssea and our needs for the Odyssea project. Um, and these these data sets come from uh, all the usual platforms, so CMEMS, EMODnet, but we also have, have other data resources. They come from the Odyssea um, uh, observatories that have been set up as part of Odyssea. They come directly from uh, citizen scientists. Um, we have two sets of data that I'm working on right now to embed into the mobile app. Um, that are One is marine litter that's been collected, so we have quite a nice resource uh, of marine litter that's going to be um, uh, shown available alongside the other products that are going on. Um, and we have some other things as well. So there's, there's quite a wide range of sources. Uh, this is the focus of this is going to significantly change now as we enter into Ecoscope as well. So we'll have a, a big band of, of data sets coming through that and the different models from there. And as we move into digital twins, that will expand again. Uh, but I think um, we're all very keen to see citizen science alongside the more our more traditional sorts of science, really, to see if uh, we can engage public and uh, diff different um, organisations in what we're doing. So it has some, I guess, for me, it has a better meaning and outreach if, if we're engaging the public in it at a more general level. Yes, and and uh, one of the reasons I'm asking that is because on the next year's data hub, we also have uh, catalogued citizen science data, and I know it's not a straightforward thing to do because of the huge variety of uh, ways to collect data, the formats, and, and so on. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. Uh, certainly in the marine litter, um, it's, it's an unusual thing to collect data on anyway. So there's, we all know that the different descriptors, different shape sizes, the perception, uh, how do you train a 10 year old child that this is bigger and this is smaller. It, it, these things are slightly complex. Uh, and then we know that in, a, in our data, we have to clean it quite a lot because it's got the name of the team that collected it, the, the children that were involved in doing it and things like that. So yeah. it's, 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 it's not so straightforward. Um, but what we have found, uh, and it's certainly evolved throughout the course of the Odyssey project, is citizen science data is becoming much more refined and much more robust. And yeah. they are following standards and they're getting better procedures. So things are improving. Yeah. Um, and, and hopefully we, we, we don't have the sort of view that we used to have many years ago is well, our citizen science data is so out there, it's not useful. But actually, I don't think that's true anymore and hasn't been for a while. Um, so yeah. I, I'm interested to see how this evolves. And certainly in other projects I work in uh, where, where we're working with citizen science data, it's, it's much more useful for validating models and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we will learn. I mean, now we have the Odyssey and Marinomica. And uh, of course, now we have uh, we are on the next year's webinar, and we will uh, Arne Jurgen will speak more to how we are actually going to cooperate and uh, leverage um, the investments that has been done already by the Commission on, on these topics. Um, now, uh, just before I, I think uh, any more questions? Uh, we had this question directly to you, Simon, from Drawer. I don't see any well, there's, else. There's just a couple, a couple yeah. of questions in there that I will answer. Is Marinomica's data also available through an API? Yes, uh, that's been deployed yeah. and um, we, we've got the documentation for that and it's being mm. tested by eModnet at the moment because eModnet want to uh, harvest some of our specific data. Uh, so yeah, that will come online and, and we'll document that on the website as well. Um, and the da glider data, I shall leave that to George Oss, who's the glider expert. Yes. Um, yeah, the, I will follow up on a question on that API question. So the API that you have is that based on uh, standards, so open search or 
open sta OGC standards? Yeah, the whole application has been fully built around OGC compliance. Mm. So everything we do is, uh, yeah, I mean, when I say we document it, we, we'll give you the endpoint and tell you how to connect it. But everything else behind that is we'll give you a high level uh, into it. But it's, it's all OGC compliant. It has to be. Yeah. So, yeah, Harald, the, the guy who asked the questions is happy. So that's good. <laughs> Um, and and Georgios, I think we will take uh, those. I'm collecting those questions. Uh, well, um, to towards the end was what I was thinking, but you turned on your camera, so go ahead and ask uh, answer. Sorry. Uh, in terms of uh, glider data, uh, first let me say is this is something that I forgot in my presentation. I uh, would like to say that all our because we are using data from other data providers, but we want also to give back data. Uh, from our systems. So all the data collected from the Odyssea systems are also uh, transferred real time or near real time to the data providers. So this, for this for this purpose, we are linked. Uh, each sensor that Odyssea has deployed is directly linked to the in-situ tag of Copernicus or Mongoose. And we want really to uh, give all our data to the Mediterranean scientific community for uh, further exploitation. Thank you. Thank you, Jojo. Now, uh, before Lauren is going to uh, talk more about services and applications that you heard a little bit about already, I want to reveal the results of the, the poll. Uh, do you need to visualize your marine data service is what I ask, because that's I see that Marinomica is, is very good, particularly on that topic. And uh, we have 36% answering that they, yes, they already do. Uh, 59 says, yes, I'm looking to do that. So uh, that's important information. Um, and then 4% is not quite sure. So that was um, the result of that poll. And now, Lauren, it's your to, to turn. Can you please introduce yourself a little bit first also? Yes. Um, thank you very much for inviting. I'm uh, Lorenz Mesar from Deltares. And... Um, uh, I'm specifically from the Marine and Coastal uh, Units and Data Science and Water Quality Department, which uh, quite nicely describes what we are doing in this project, uh, deriving marine and coastal services and uh, using data science tools, all kind of um, monitoring technologies, a lot of earth observation, and trying to package this into nice services to all kind of users. And this is what I've been working on in, in a range of other um, European or national finance projects. And within the, the project, uh, the Odyssey project itself, uh, I'm mainly trying to help to, to navigate between the scientist perspective that was uh, also uh, presented by Georges, all those um, intellectual uh, innovations and also the, the user um, needs that that were evaluated and, and collected along the project. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> okay, so I hope you see my screen. Yes, you're good to go. Yes, you can click on the hind button, perhaps. To, yeah, I will do that. Yeah. So. Uh, again, we are talking about the Odyssey project and uh, the services and products that um, we are uh, delivering and producing. And because it is available through the Marinamica platform, we often call it the Marinamica services and products, but um, this is all under the Odyssey project. So just to summarize in a really quick message, what we are trying to achieve is uh, user-friendly products that can be used not only by trained uh, trained professionals, but also um, untrained um, either NGOs, uh, scientists, decision makers. It is really about trying to um, deliver information that is actionable and easy to interpret. So uh, stepping back and summarizing all that uh, basically Georges was outlining, uh, that is that we have, from the technological perspective, a range of data sources, uh, all those uh, in situ, the coastal models that um, operationally uh, being uh, run, all the external data sets. We touched a bit about the citizen science. We have to update because it's continuously changing. 
and a bit of this um, uh, machine learning and algorithms that can combine and enhance the data. And this gives us, uh, this gives us a, a range of essential ocean variables or non-essential ocean variables, but a range of uh, marine variables. Uh, but when we talk about services and products, we have to package this into a more understandable way. And uh, we have to focus on the, the problem itself, how to deliver um, really tailored information. So for this, we had uh, all along the project consultations with um, users. On the platform itself, we have a profile section where you can uh, fill your, uh, your country of interest and also your sector. And later on along the project, we are going to connect those identified sectors to the dedicated dashboard so that when you launch your platform, you don't have to go through all the selection of uh, variables, but it will be something really uh, customized for you. So uh, keeping this in mind, now we can look back to the table and reorganize a bit. And I highlight a tailored here because that's the most important part. We, we as users, we don't necessarily want to know where the data is coming from, what kind of manipulation steps uh, have uh, taken place. What we are really interested in is the application domain, be it offshore, oil and gas, um, ecosystems, ports, or aquaculture, and what exactly we can extract from this information. And this is uh, if we uh, consider adverse uh, um, events, for example, location, the time when it's happening, can we get alarms, early warnings, and other information attributes that are really relevant and uh, helpful for decision making. So this is the tailored part of our uh, services. The second part is the coastal, which was already highlighted by Georges, that um, there are still plenty of environmentally and or economically important areas along the Mediterranean basin. And they are not really, uh, uh, they are not sufficiently covered by global regional data. And we have to focus separately on those. And we can, uh, using the Odyssey approach, plug in new models and uh, solve the sufficient scales for uh, coastal modeling. So um, this was all about how we derive the data to make available services. And now from the user perspective, what you get is essentially a theme that you uh, would like to uh, explore, be it mar maritime safety, um, really industry oriented, uh, such as ports or aquaculture, more policy oriented um, related to plastics, as it was mentioned bo by both speakers. And here, what we present is uh, really the information attributes. So what, how it is being developed and how it is being collected, it's, it's in the background, in the backend. What's really important for users is these information attributes. And as uh, Simon uh, outlined, the best tool that we have at the moment to really uh, de um, deliver tailored services are these dedicated dashboards that can be customized by us um, uh, in advance or by the user themselves. And these are usually focusing on a specific uh, geographic area where the users operate. They, uh, they are focusing on a topic of interest, in this case, the eutrophication, and then apart from giving background information in HTML and uh, adding images, links, then you can select the indicators from the platform and add to that dashboard in a way uh, that you find most useful. It can be alerts, uh, it can be time series or maps. And um, the whole idea is then that you have everything that you need for your operation in one specific dashboard. So this is uh, about the main concepts. And I just uh, end the presentation with a few uh, examples of the, um, the visual representation of our services. Some of them were mentioned, for example, the wave power. Uh, I put in brackets where they originate from if, um, if um, the audience is interested. This is being calculated by, on, uh, by our own algorithms and gives um, the wave energy that is potentially useful for offshore operations. Another interesting one, uh, more on the water quality domain, is the trophic status. Uh, that is um, mostly useful for the policy domain, but there is also interest now in um, uh, aquaculture or any other uh, operational um, systems that would like to know the traffic status of the of the waters. This is also calculated by algorithms. 
Another interesting example is the, the power of our coastal models. This is nutrient concentration along um, uh, Morocco. And what you see is that the scale, when you increase, then it even allows you to uh, investigate land-based source uh, events. And that is something that is add-on from the openly available existing um, uh, data sets. Yet another one is the, the lander that was already described by Georgias. These, of course, these Odyssey measure data sets are available through the platform. And uh, you can derive the statistics out of them. You can visualize them, export, and uh, further process if it's needed. And the last, because it was uh, already asked by the audience, um, the jellyfish occurrence. The jellyfish portfolio itself, as Simon mentioned, it includes our own Odyssey developed um, distribution model, which means that you release the jellyfish particles and with their biological um, stages, they develop, evolve, being spread. And then if it's uh, red, then they are stranded and uh, the coastal um, authorities can be warned. But of course, there is the, the semantic analysis of the uh, social media accounts or the more curated uh, citizen science. So I thought that uh, this would give you um, a bird's eye um, view of the Marinomica process of deriving the services and some of them that are already available. But of course, if you have more questions, please contact us, me, and uh, post your uh, questions right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh... Lauren, uh, uh, how do you, uh, sorry, uh, how do you say your name again? It's uh, Lurins. That, Lurins. That's always an U. That's the... uh, oh, okay, <laughs> Lurins. Sorry for totally messing up your name. Lurins. <laughs> um, no so um, thank you so much. Uh, quite impressive set of, impressive set of uh, services, I, I have to say. Uh, do you have any questions? Now is the time to ask them while you have them fresh. Um, while you are doing that, uh, we have this uh, informal uh, poll also during uh, Lorenz's uh, presentation. And I was asking if you are a user of uh, an ocean service or application. And most of you, in fact, you are 62%. And uh, 29, not yet, but considering it. So this is interesting. And 11 uh, is not 11 percent is not using. So thank you so much for participating again. I hope you find um, them useful, these uh, informal polls that we are doing. Um, now, we have heard about Odyssea. We have heard about Marinomica, a whole range of services. Uh, related both to directly to the ocean and to the coastal zone. I think that was very interesting, Lorenz, by the way, because uh, when you look at uh, satellite imagery, uh, satellite data, there is a bit of a challenge to combine the information um, and the satellite data that you get from directly from the ocean and that to the land, so the coastal zone. Do you, have you en encounter any challenges related to that in your particular services? The challenges of uh, integrating um, ocean and land-based information? Yes. Well, um, I think uh, the, the Coastal Erosion Service, where, uh, which was mainly uh, developed by Georgia's team, maybe he can shed more light on if they had any specific problems. What I know that in general, in the Copernicus arena, the co better covering the coastal zone, which is a bit of gray, uh, of both, because from the marine side, you can say it's already land. From the land, you can say that it's already mm -hmm. wet. Um, they are also trying to enhance that. And many of the, the products uh, that we are using, they are built on them. When we do use raw products, uh, I think uh, the case of the coastal erosion product is like that. I think you have to do uh, manual pre-processing of that. And maybe, Georges, you can um, further explain how you have uh, tackled that. Yes, uh, the, the coastal erosion case is the most obvious one where we really try to integrate the marine data with the land use and the land uh, satellite data. 
uh, what we are trying, what we achieved there is that we had the data from Landsat and uh, the Sentinels and uh, other uh, satellites from of higher resolution, and we tried really when we identified the areas of uh, the hotspots of coastal erosion, we tried to understand why these uh, areas are uh, hotspots. So. In order to do that, we went back to the Copernicus data sets, especially the wave data sets, in order to see what happens with the wave energy, which is incident on these particular segments of the coast. And we realized that when someone correlates the wave energy that the coastal segment re receives, and, uh, and uh, he, he can really find a very good relationship between the uh, retrieval of the coastline and the uh, wave energy incident of the coast. And this is something that uh, we haven't published yet, but we are in the process. Uh, it's uh, really give us an opportunity to uh, integrate data from satellites with the data from models, the wave models, the hydrodynamic models, the near shore environment, and to understand the physics and the understand and pro pro most probably, most importantly, uh, provide the solutions because when you know the uh, me mechanism behind the um, the events, for example, here we have the case of coastal erosion. You are able to propose to the engineers uh, more ri rigid and uh, sound solutions. Mm, absolutely, and the coastline, of course, most most of us live actually along the coast around the world. I mean, most populations and a lot of the value economic value is along the coastline so these are of course uh, very important topics but moving along i think arne jorgen we need to give the floor to you um because of your uh, time constraints also we are um, um we are approaching the hour so arne jorgen um a short introduction of yourself be before you are putting it all together for us You are mute, I think, Arne Jorgen. We still have problems with your sound now. So we know that uh, he has several channels. So I think it's about <laughs> the challenge is now for him to, to pick the right one. Still not hearing you. Okay. There. There. This one. Yep. Go ahead. So you hear me now? Yes, we do. Okay, good. Yeah, so there is a different speaker and microphone here. Yes, my name is Arne Bare from Sintef Digital in Oslo, Norway. And I have a focus on digital platforms and uh, interoperability in different domains, work with the European organizations uh, like Big Data Value Association and the new AI Data Robotics uh, Association. And uh, in this context, there is a lot of interesting technologies that can apply. In particular, the area of, of digital twins uh, is relevant. Also, uh, you might have heard about uh, the initiative of the Commission on Destination Earth. So that is an interesting context for not only the ocean, but also other aspects of Earth modeling. And I'll switch it so you see the right one here. Now you should see the big screen. Um, the Iliad project that uh, we will talk about uh, is funded uh, through the European Green Deal call. So that was uh, last year. And, and it's now starting uh, towards the, the end of this year. And it's part of a, of a very ambitious vision of creating high precision digital models of the Earth. And uh, that means that the digital twin of the ocean is an important part of this. But there will also be others, and they will have to be integrated and related. And, and it's a huge vision by the European initiatives for the next 10 years. So in particular, we have been involved now with the uh, uh, Odyssea project and Marinomica, as you have heard, also Next Geos in the context of this call, uh, for a project funded for this digital twin of the ocean called Iliad that will start towards the end of the year. What we see here is basically the life cycle of data collection 
for the twin from the initial data collection to, to data management to hybrid models, fusion models, uh, visualization and um, analytics, and a number of initiatives and platforms that are related here. We don't believe in one digital twin of the ocean. We believe in the twin of twins uh, approach. And for that, we are creating a federated architecture that allows a number of initiatives to be brought together. <clears throat> so we see a lot of various sources of uh, data input on the left hand side for data acquisition. Odyssea is one of them. We have ocean labs in Norway, in, in uh, the North Sea. Uh, and, and many other places that will be brought in. We have the diocese, um, Copernicus. There is a lot of data sources, and they also come together with models. So there are also models as part of this input. And uh, our approach here is to bring together these in a federated system where Nextgeos uh, uh, provides input on a federated catalog. We have just heard about the Marinomica underlying platform, but we are also using others such as the, the ocean data platform. We take inspiration from an interoperability space from agriculture called Demeter, working with the, with the standards, and also in the larger European initiative of European data spaces with Gaia-X and the international data spaces architecture, again linked to, to computing and storage resources, uh, integration of models and model fusion, of course, this is all spatial temporal models that needs to be harmonized in space and time to, to work together and to interoperate at different resolution levels. So there are integrations here that are needed for this to happen as a kind of unified perspective into a lot of different uh, data sources and models with associated user interfaces, dashboards, and interaction environments. And of course, for this, we have a number of different application areas. We heard some of them today, and there are others. It includes also citizen science besides the, the sensor technologies and uh, various architectural approaches, including the, the Gaia-X, uh, the International Data Spaces Association, the Federation of Next Geos that goes into to the Iliad architecture. Uh, some of you might have seen this model here uh, from Gaia-X and from IDS annotated with aspects of the next geos data hub federated catalogs and identity management the notion of uh, data spaces which will go beyond the digital twin of the ocean but also to other domains of european data spaces and be part of the international data spaces but in particular in iliad we will focus on the digital twin of the ocean in this context to bring both uh, data and models uh, together so this project is now in, say, negotiation contract setup phase and hasn't started yet. Uh, of course, there are more details to all of these architected things that we will come back to. But uh, as you see uh, from uh, some of the uh, platforms here, um, the Odyssea project and uh, Marinomica are important uh, core partners in this, as well as uh, Nextgeos and, and others. So this is a kind of pre-marketing of um, the things that will come from this project once it gets started, even though we are already working on it now, uh, even before the project has officially had its start. So that was a quick overview and the context uh, of Iliad uh, related to the presentations you heard today. Thank you very much, Arne. And, um, and you see, there's, uh, it's quite a busy uh, landscape. I, I think uh, we can all agree that uh, this is one of the challenges that we are asked to uh, respond to. And we have been asked by the commissions, our politicians, for quite some time, but it's very, very hard. And um, I asked now in uh, the poll um, whether or not you would find it useful um, to have um, a one-stop platform for, in this case, marine data information and uh, services. And the response is uh, 20, sorry, 83% yes, 5% no, and 11% uh, not sure. So, uh, so a variety, but most of, most of you would find it um, useful to have a one-stop shop 
uh, where you can find marine, every, everything marine. So I guess this is one of the basis basis for a uh, basis for the digital twin of the ocean, as you mentioned. And we all we have several digital twins. We are digitizing uh, the entire planet and uh, our activities these days. So are yeah, maybe a retreat that we don't believe in one digital twin or say one stop mm -hmm. shop for all. This is a federation where a lot of these initiatives will actually work together and interoperate. So there can be multiple entry points into this uh, based on your perspective. Mm -hmm. But our goal is that they all will interoperate and support each other and uh, basically meet the needs we have of high resolution models in, in certain areas, different models uh, perhaps in, in other areas, and, and a federation where all of these can interoperate rather than just serving uh, one thing for all. Yes, I think based on uh, my experience anyways, for in with 20 years in the Earth observation community, um, it seems like multiple um, communities, different applications and user communities, user also involving, uh, meaning uh, scientists, the specific fields and very narrow fields sometimes, they have their own uh, sort of community and prefer and maybe have only access and, and to, to that uh, community. And I think, uh, Arne Jürgen, what you said is that we are trying to accommodate that to make that easier, acknowledging the complexity of the world, right? Yeah, which is also is the objective of the uh, vision of European data spaces. It's not uh, one shared storage for all. It's a federation of all of these in different initiatives, uh, uh, data sources, uh, models that we have with different entry points and different uh, interactions, but with an interoperability perspective so that we can actually benefit from each other and create synergies. Exactly. So this is the same sort of concept that GEO and GEOS, so Group on Earth Observations, the Global Earth Observing System of System, have tried to develop. Um, because, yeah, if you look at the global perspective, there are so many things going on and to having them work together and try to coordinate and synchronize, etc., is is what the best uh, the best you can try to achieve, and and this is getting more concrete now with modern technology. Would would that be correct, Arna, to say that? Yeah, I think this is uh, in the spirit of uh, the evolution in the IT community that we now mm -hmm. want to take uh, advantage of, also in the context of the digital twin of the ocean. Yeah. Absolutely. So thanks. Uh, we are, uh, we didn't say exactly how long time we would use, but normally one hour is a good time for, for a webinar. Um, uh, I think I had, I promised Paul, if Paul is still here, I promised that Paul could be invited in the room because he had something he wanted to say. So, Paul, if you're here, I can actually invite you if you raise your hand. Otherwise, I, I think we can uh, um, uh, welcome you for a next webinar uh, and keep an eye on uh, on announcement, both from Odyssea, from Marinomica, and from Next Geos. Um, I don't see I don't see any more questions. I don't see Paul. So I think that's um, that's what we we can draw the line here. Uh, Arne Jürgen, can you unshare your screen again, please? Yep. And uh, I was going to suggest that we do a uh, screenshot of all the presenters. We lost Simon. We forgot to do it before Simon left. Uh, but uh, give me a smile. <laughs> <laughs> And I take this is this is what we do now, right? We don't have group pictures in front of the entrance or whatever. We we do a, a screenshot. <laughs> um, thank you so much for all of your speakers. This was super interesting. Thank you for your time. Um, the the uh, record. Ah, Paul is here. Okay, very last minute, Paul. Yeah, he has something to say. So I invited Paul. Uh, the recording, I had a question, uh, I think, drawer, uh, who else might have a question for this? Since you register for this webinar and enter the webinar like that with your email, you will actually get the recording sent to your email automatically. 
Uh, we will also publish the recording of this on our respective YouTube channels. It will be on XGOS. It will be on my channels as well. Uh, do we have uh, Paul here? No. He, the thing is that, yeah, here he comes. Paul, we see you are entering the room. Hello, Paul. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, um, thank you for the presentations, for all the presenters. And uh, my first question was on the glider, and uh, I was interest, interested to see that it was uh, matched against the Sentinel-3. But uh, I don't know if it's just purely an algorithm or it was uh, collected based on in-situ protocols. Uh, whenever we do glider missions, we try to have uh... We follow the track of uh, satellite and we try to see whether the data, especially chlorophyll or turbidity data that are uh, given by the satellite are in accordance to what we measure in the field. Okay. I don't know if this is your yeah, question. Are they, are they matched up based on the, the pixel resolutions or? Uh, the resolution of uh, Sentinel-3 was around 300 meters, I think, okay. for this, for the chlorophyll. Uh, we consider the glider as ground truth data okay and we try to see whether there is a uh, interrelation or what sort of error we find in the assessment of the satellite algorithms for the uh, specific uh, chlorophyll measurements mm, okay, okay. Uh, because i'm interested in uh, ocean optics ocean remote sensing so uh, we we you... take the uh, integrated uh, chlorophyll data of over the euphotic zone and we compare with the okay. with the satellite sorry okay that's nice. And uh, my second question is for Lorient. Uh, the, yes. the, the products that were derived, I don't know if there has been any form of validation in terms of uh, certainty or uncertainty. Yes, well, of course, you have to separate the products because they, as I mentioned several times, they are from different sources. Okay. So if uh, some of the algorithms that uh, basically take existing data uh, then you have to look back to the input data uncertainty. In okay. that case, our algorithms just combine those data sets and will not add extra uncertainty. If we talk about our own models, coastal models, they are being validated. And those validation reports are at the moment part of um, project deliverables, but I guess they will be uh, available um, open and also through publications. Okay. If it's, uh, yeah, so basically we try always to to validate the products. Whenever we just take existing data, then of course we have to refer back to the, the source uh, uncertainty. Okay. Yeah, my previous um, study was on uh, shoreline change using optical and radar images. And I'm happy to see the presentation here, but I don't know if anything on uh, artificial intelligence was incorporated in shoreline change. Or machine learning? Uh, no, we haven't done something like that yet. Okay. Yeah, because I, I heard you said about the complications on, on shoreline change. You said something about waves. Yes, we we, so. we try to inter we we try to integrate the in the uh, in our assessment not only the um, uh, satellite data but also the data coming from the wave models that are provided by. Uh, Copernicus in for the whole Mediterranean and downscaled in the specific uh, nine observatories so that we know um, which is the factor which is responsible for the retreat of the coastline. Oh, any incorporation about the beach slopes? Beach slope is considered. Beach slope okay. is considered. Okay. Uh, we use Aster data. That's it for me. Thank uh, you. Beach, beach slope is considered in the wave model. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul, for joining us and for asking us uh, very interesting questions. But with that, I think I can only encourage you to uh, subscribe to more webinars. I'm sure we will have more webinars following on this particular one as well, because uh, as you know, we have the entered the International Decade for Ocean Sciences. So uh, the ocean is super hot right now. Uh, and, um, and Marinomica and Odyssea and Nexgeos and the Iliad project, as you heard about, 
will definitely uh, be providing more interesting topics to discuss and to share information with you guys. If you have if you have any suggestions of topics, let us know. You can send um, you can send a, an email. You can connect with us on on um, Twitter. Actually, I think that's a, a good uh, way to reach us. Is uh, simply next to us. Uh, like this on Twitter and do you have uh, you I guess you also have a Twitter account in Odyssea and Marinomica do you know it yes yes can you share uh, it in the chat yeah I will try to find it quickly but uh, Simon is responsible for that and he left but I think uh, the Twitter account is Odyssea platform if I'm not mistaken that's correct yeah so at Odyssea platform I can write it since I know it. <laughs> Platform, we like that. If you if you go there, if you look at uh, Twitter, you will find that. And that's where you can connect uh, with the people here in Nextios and Odyssea. So um, for suggestions of topics that you would like to, uh, to uh, get more information about. OK, again, thank you so much uh i'm looking forward to hear from you we uh we will see you again thank you bye bye thank you very much bye thank you very much thank you better <laughs>